or we're doing a church rebuild. <laughs> and I'll let you guys know why. Saturday, Monday evening, I got off work at 9.30. I came from the building. It had already been raining. You guys know, it was like 1 o'clock when it started raining in town. So it had already been raining for eight hours. And I called Dad. I got to the church because I couldn't get home to my apartment. You guys know I live right behind the Target. And I couldn't even get home. So I came to the church because it was the only dry place I could get to. And I went downstairs and there was just a tiny bit of water underneath this one window. I said, hey, Dad. Guess what? There's just a little bit of water. This is good. Like, look, we had all this rain. That was about 9.35. And then, the next, these next, the, yeah, this picture right here. So about uh, 45 minutes later, um, I went downstairs, and I saw on the floor lights. I said, I don't know. What, where did we put lights on the floor? <laughs> But that's water, guys. That's water. On the left-hand side, that's water. On the fellowship hall, there was two inches of water. It was up in my, on my shoe. Um, it was in the, the Korean church room with soap, the junior disciple. Every room downstairs had water in it, um, including the big, the, the big floor, two inches of, of, of water. And so um, I called that. I said, Dad, actually, actually, there's water down here, a lot of water. So I started taking some, you know, they had those little kid tables, and I started squeegeeing across the floor into uh, the, the youth room, which is the red room down here on the right-hand side. We have a, a, a hole there for water, where the water should be. Should be. So I just, anyway, and um, then I decided you may have saw the video I did live on Facebook, but I said, I'm tired, I want to go home. And the water, the water out on the street, Eugenia was flooded all the way up to the wheels of the, the cars parked on the street. Um, and so uh, by that time, by about two, by some time in the morning, it had gone down. I said, okay, I'll go home. Um, I started my car, closed the doors, and then said, oh, you know, I should make sure the church is locked if I'm leaving. So I got out of my car. And the door is locked on my vehicle while the engine was starting, and the, and the lights were on. Anyway, Dad came, rescued me, and there's still a ton of water downstairs. So he said, "Hey, let's get the rest of this out since we're here." So I, we shot back. Anyway, we got more water. So next picture, though. Uh, well, no, I didn't stay there. Uh, so the cool thing is, I, I was told them Dad, I said, Dad, we have insurance. Like, let's go, let's call the insurance. Said, no, they've never covered any water damage. That's why, for those of you guys that have been here for years, know that, hey, um, when we get heavy rains, we just shop back it, we try to dry it out, and that's about, that's about the best we, we can do. And so, uh, Monday morning, Dad called, and when they, uh, three years ago, the church switched our the type of church we are, from a district, a, a, a state church, basically a district church, to a national church, and so we were able to switch insurances. Well, in that insurance policy, Dad called and was like, wasn't even sure if they were going to do anything, and we had provision in our insurance for a flood. Yeah. Uh, so we had a $10,000 provision to help us recover the flood. So with that, we said, great. So we called the company and said, hey, there's a the, the cleanup that needs to get done. They said, okay, we'll come in. They assessed how much water, they assessed all the damage. And they said, all right, for just a mere pennies, just for $19,000, we'll remove all of the wet stuff and dry it out for you. We, we can't do that. We're going to call on people, and you can show the next picture, that yesterday there was 25 people that showed up from four different ministries, and they said, hey, we can help and work. And so we had friends from Focus Church in Sun Prairie, people come all the way down from Portage, we had um, also from Rio Assembly, they all came down yesterday, and we were down there sweating like pigs, and um, getting work done. So you can see uh, 24 inches along the whole basement, uh, we had to cut the drywall, get the insulation out, and then on the next uh, page, go ahead and uh, do that next one. Is those are the two the, the, the two rooms that are most uh, damaged? Is a Korean church office, so that's that's the, the the one that's right underneath these steps in this exit area, 
and in the junior discipleship room on in that corner right underneath Britain, um, there is extensive damage that we need to not only rebuild, repair, but then um, put some preventative measures in place. Um, every room down there, if you look, you guys can't go down there. Don't go down. But if you were to go down, every room down there uh, has damage that we remove drywall or you remove the insulation. But I just wanted to say again to you on the next slide, thank you. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. Yeah. Thank you for saying yes and willing to do this. I was, I was hosting yesterday uh, a thank you to the district because they, you know, churches are saying, hey, how can we help? Uh, we're getting help. Thank you, thank you, thank you for, for helping out. And this was, I've been calling this first, this demolition, uh, this is step one, this is phase one in everything because there's going to be rebuild, there's going to be prevention measures that we're going to um, go in. And so uh, the verse that I wanted to read you guys is Isaiah chapter 43. And I'm going to, I'm going to pull that whole section up. Uh, Isaiah chapter 43. On Thursday evening, we had a gathering of our board, and we just like kind of looked at each other, like, "Okay, what's next?" But we don't know. Let's still pray. I'm going to pray, and the Lord will provide. But Isaiah 43, verse one, it says this: "But now, thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob; He who formed you, O Israel, fear not." Amen. You guys know. And when you're looking at this much damage and the church finances that we have, um, there is some uh, question marks on how all these things are going to... And the Lord reminded me, Isaiah 43, fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Yeah. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom, Cush and Seab ex as exchange for you, because you are, my, you are precious in my eyes, and honored, and I love you. I give men in return for you, people in exchange for your life. Fear not. For I am with you, I will bring your offering from the east and from the west, I will gather you. I will say to the north, give, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring your sons from afar and your daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, who I created for my glory, who I am formed and I made, bring out the people who are blind, yet have eyes, who are deaf, yet have ears. All the nations gather together, and the people assemble. Who among them can declare these things and show us the former things? Let them bring their witnesses to prove them right. Let them hear and say, it is true. It is true that we do not have to fear in this situation. That's right. That God is in control. And we saw yesterday just a small piece that there's people from the south, from the north, from the west, that God is gathering to help us rebuild. There's, there's, there's finances that are going to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They're going to come and help us, um, help us rebuild. And not only rebuild, but for all those that have been here for a few years, we're going to prevent. So, uh, we're going to prevent. There's a testimony in that, that um, we have a church building company in town that we asked to come in and to assess some things. If you look out on our exit door over there, you can see that it is one of the lowest points on the building uh, is a door, right? Uh, so water congregates there. And so when Eugenia filled up and our drainage system is supposed to go to Eugenia, well, then the water just started filling up on the exit door. And then it decided, oh, well, you know, the lowest point is going to be in the basement. So it went in the basement. So we had this building company come in to assess, say, hey, what could we do here? And they went and looked at our blueprints and they said, we might have built this building, and that's really not the way it should be. Up, that should have, it should have been built. Um, so, there, so Monday, uh, all of this is going to be in process. Hey, basically, I want to inform you guys today, let you guys know what's happening. 
all this is going to be in process. We're going to hear from them on Monday, and they may say, you know what, we made a bad mistake. We just need to fix this for you. Yeah. That's, that's the prayer that we're praying, and I want you guys to pray with it. It, 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 it will cost for us to do it right. Uh, for us to do it right, it's going to cost $15,000 or more uh, to, to go ahead and fix that exit door the way it's supposed to be. And we're praying, they just say, you know what, we did it wrong in the first place. That's our, that's our signature on your blueprints. Uh, we'll go ahead and fix it for you. So pray with us in that way. Yes. So they just say, yeah, we'll fix it. That's not, that's not the way it should be done. It should, the door should never be that low. In that corner, too, um, we, we already know what we need to do. One of the good things is, for the, those of you who have been around for a few years, all the other water prevention measures that we've done on this side of the building, there was no water that came in on this side. So praise the Lord. Amen. God, you guys have used wisdom. You guys have worked hard and done anything. Hey, it worked. Now we just need to sure up these last two areas in the building. And we won't have to worry about rain coming in. But, but who expected eight inches of rain? Nobody expected eight no. plus inches of rain. And so this next phase that we're going to go on, phase two of this process, is going to be securing funds. Right now, our rough estimate, of course, we're still hearing back from people of what it's going to cost. We still have drywall company coming in. We still have different people who are going to come in and tell us the cost. But the, the rough estimate is $35,000 that we're going to need to not only rebuild what was there, but then prevent, do some preventative measures so that these other areas are shored up. It's going to be $35,000. If you guys know, our main account of the church doesn't hold five. <laughs> $5,000, let alone $35,000. But we're creating a flood fund at Capital City Church. And so the next phase is going to require something on our parts. You guys know that uh, this area is our area for kids ministry, and we believe in next generation ministry. We believe that the kids are the future of the <coughs> church. And then we want Brian and all the staff down there, we want them to have a space that they can use and not have to worry about flood or mold or any of these kind of things. And so if you go to the next part of this, um, the, the question for you is what is my part? What's my part in this? And, and man, I appreciate the sweat and muscle that you guys gave last week. And I know going forward, uh, we're gonna ask again for some sweat and muscle. I mean, Tuesday, all this stuff, you can see it pile up in the corner here. Uh, the city dumpsters are so used, right? Everybody's using them that we won't get a city dumpster till Tuesday. So we're going to need some more sweat and muscle Tuesday just to get that stuff into the dumpster. But the other side of it is there is a financial need that we have as a church that uh, we're asking you, what is your part? And so I have three ways for you to take part, for you to ask yourself, can I do these things? The first one is... As a, as a pastor, as a, as a leadership staff, we're asking you to consider giving. Whether it's 100, 500, 1,000, or some other amount, we're asking you, hey, what can we give to help support this fund? We're hearing about some, some really neat things. There's a disaster relief fund um, that we can apply for because of the state of emergency. There are some things that we can apply for. Because of the equity that we have in this building, there's loans that we can apply for. Um, and so uh, we're praying that all these things work together, that all these things will be funded in no time. But we're asking you, hey, what can you give? Can you give 100, 500, 1,000? Is there some other amount that you can give for us to help raise this $35,000 quickly and so that we can get this work done sooner than later? The second thing that we're going to be doing is, hey, we're a social church. There's social media. And today, this afternoon, I'll be posting on our Capital City Church page, uh, web, sorry, it's already on our website, but on our social media page on Facebook, I'm going to be posting the first, hey, here's what we need. Can you consider giving? I'm asking you, if you're on social media, if you're on Facebook, if you would share that. Let them know, hey, I attend a church that was affected by the 2018 Madison floods. And people know what's going on around here, and they we prompted to give. So we're asking you, hey, share these posts with the person saying, hey, this is my church. I was affected by this flood. And we're going to share that, and 
so that other people can see what's going on and they, they'll be able to give. And then the third thing we're asking is that you would consider asking five people to help support the flood fund. And so I have a form letter that I'll also be sending out to the church where you can, where everything will be filled in. You just have to fill in the name of the person and maybe a personal sentence that says, hey, I hope you're doing well. This is what's going on in my life. And it will talk specifically about, hey, there's the flood that happened, the damage that's done, and you guys will receive that. And I'm not going to hound you next Monday, the next Sunday and say, hey, did you send it to five people? Did you send it to five people? But no, I'm asking you on your own accord to say, hey, I know five people that I could send this to that have, I, I kind of qualify it this way, five people that I think have the means and have the desire to, to, to give to help the church rebuild and prevent. So that's going to be the important part. It's not just the rebuild part. We think that part, the $10,000, will go towards the drywalling and those kind of things. But there's the prevention part, and that's going to be where the, the financial uh, it, the finances are really going to be uh, a blessing or help us get the prevention part put in place. Because pastor has been here for 13 plus years. He's tired of the shop backing up water. Uh, Rajiv, I know you've been here for a few of these rains that they get in the building and have shot. And people have been doing this for years. So much so when we commented, when I put the first thing, there's church members that have been here that are now all over the world and they're commenting, yeah, I remember when I used to do that with the church, and I used to shop back, and I used to shop back. And, and so, you know, it's time for us to make things right. It's time for us to get things in order so that this doesn't happen again. We don't have to face this over and over again every time there's a heavy rank the downpour. This time again, eight inches has been more than what we've had before, but hey, we, we want to rid the problem, make things right. So with that, I'm asking you, would you participate in raising what we need so that this can go forward, so we can move forward as a church and everything is made right? Amen? Can I pray over us as we consider how we can do our part? Father, I am grateful for this season that we're in. Father, though it may seem like trouble, it may seem like something we don't want, God, in it, we are able to see your mighty power and your work on display. Father, in this week alone, Father, we've seen provision and insurance. We've seen churches coming together. Father, we've seen professionals examine things and, and question whether they are responsible for it. Father, I thank you, God, that you are lining all these things up. And so, Father, now when we look at this $35,000, Father Lord, we know, Father Lord, is an amount that we don't currently have in, in our storehouse. But Father Lord, we trust that, Father Lord, you, who are the provider of all things, God will be able to supply our needs. Father, I pray that as a church body, as we consider what we can do, what we can give, how we can share this need, Father Lord, that you would prompt us, Father Lord, with amounts, Father Lord, you would prompt us with specific people, and Father Lord, we would see again you come through as we wait on you. God, we cannot do this in our own. We cannot do this in our own means. But Father Lord, calling on you, God, we know that you'll answer. So Father Lord, I pray that we would watch in amazement. Father, as we do our part, Father Lord, and you do yours. Yeah. God, we pray that these things would be completed in a timely manner. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Before we go forward, we do, a, a pastor has a message to share this morning, but is there any questions that you have in regards to uh, anything from the damage done, to the repair plan, to the fund plan? Is there any questions that you may have? Great. So are we still getting stuff from insurance? We still are getting the $10,000. So they came in on Thursday and said, yes, you have the $10,000. Um, and then it's going to be the rest of the cost above that. So picture for this alone, the doors downstairs, every one of the doors had to be replaced. The doors were $250 each, so that's $1,000 like that. So people came to expect to pay that Right, so all the exceptions that already happened, we have to pay those individuals as well. So that, that $10,000 is there, but it will go quite quickly. Yeah. But because we have people come in and they don't have to pay 
Right. So the, the 19,000 was would have been what we did yesterday plus drying out. So they would have brought in fans and those kind of things. Uh, but we went ahead and we had our own fans. We had the demolition crew. So we did what they would have cost, would have cost us 19,000. Awesome, guys. We're going to do this together. Just like we started, just like beforehand, we're going to go forward together, and we're going to see God's hand, I believe, over and over again. So please remember that God is in control, and consider how you can give, how you can share, and who you can ask to take part in this fund. The website is already up. If you look at capitalcitychurch.org, you'll see Flood 2018, um, and that's a place that, sh that you can go yourself. All of that money that's going in there will be directly for the flood flood uh, fund. Um, and then if you're sharing that, that's what we're going to share, is that flood fund so that people go directly there and they can give it set up so that people don't have to make accounts. They can just go ahead and give right there. But thank you guys. We're going to do this. God's going to do this. And we're going to see a miracle. Amen. Yeah. Amen.